In this video, I'll be discussing about simple interests. Now, let me define the useful concepts involved in dealing with simple interests. Considering this formula, this is the formula for the computation of the simple interest I. I is equal to P times R times T. I is the interest, P is the principal, R is the rate of interest, and T is the time period. If you say interest, this is the amount paid for borrowed money. The borrower shall pay the interest to the lender. On the other hand, the principal denoted by P is the amount that is initially borrowed. At the point of view of the investor or lender, the principal is the amount being invested or being lent. Now, R. R is the rate of interest at which the principal is given to the borrower for a certain time. In the computation, R should be in decimal form, like the rate of 5% should be converted to its decimal form, which is 0 0.05, 10% to 0 0.10, etc. T is time. This is the time period from the beginning when the money was borrowed to the period when the money shall be returned with interest. In the computation, T should always be in years. When the given is in days or months, you need to convert this given time in years. Later, we'll be dealing with examples where we'll be needing to convert to years the time given in months or days. Given this formula for the simple interest I, it can also be transformed to the following equivalent equations or formulas. Depending on the unknown quantity we are required to determine, so that, for instance, to calculate for P, then we'll be using this formula for P. P is equal to I all over R times T. When solving for R, on the other hand, then this will be the formula. R is equal to I all over PT. And when we are solving for T, the time T, then this is T is equal to I all over P times R. Of course, uh, these three formulas can be derived from the original formula, I is equal to P, R, P. Now, this is the formula for the future value. We denote it by F. The future value is also termed as the final amount. Clearly, the future value is the addition of the principal amount that we have in the beginning and the interest earned on that principal amount after the completion of the period. We can also derive a more straightforward formula for the future value given the principal P, the rate R, and the time T. Now, since we know that I is equal to P times R times T, then we can substitute this uh, quantity PRT into this equation for I to come up with this. Then, factoring out P at this uh, right side of the equation, we'll now have F is equal to P times 1 plus RT. Again, this is a useful and more straightforward formula to use to determine the future value when the given are the principal P, the rate R, and the time T. Of course, we can also manipulate this formula for F to come up with these equivalent formulas when we are solving for P, R, and T respectively. Note that, as I mentioned earlier, the time T must always be in years when using those formulas earlier presented, so that when the given time is in months, we need to divide it by 12, since there are 12 months in a year. When it is given in days, we convert it using these two methods, the exact and the ordinary methods. For the exact method, our divisor is 365. This is for the reason that there are actually 365 days in a year, except that for a leap year, where there are, of course, 366 days. For the ordinary method, 
our divisor is 360. Here we assume that it's of the 12 months in a year has 30 days. The ordinary method is used by most businesses. Perhaps this is because the computed simple interest using the ordinary method is always bigger than the exact method. Note that when the method of computation is not stipulated in the problem, always use the ordinary method. This is the rule of thumb. Now, let's have some examples. First, suppose we want to find the simple interest earned in an account where 50,000 pesos is on deposit for two years at 3.5% annual interest. Well, clearly, here, this given 50,000 pesos is the principal the time is in years this is two years and the rate of interest is 3.5 percent of course we always convert this rate of interest into decimal into its decimal equivalent to have it as 0.035 Substituting these given values of P, R, and T into this equation or formula for I, we'll now have I is equal to 50,000, well, this is P, times 0 0.035, this is now R, times 2, this is uh, the value of T. Then we'll have, after a simplification, 3,500 pesos. Therefore, the simple interest earned in an account or 50,000 pesos is on deposit for two years at 3.5% interest rate is 3,500 pesos. Now, let's have another example. Suppose we want to find the principal necessary to earn 5,000 pesos in simple interest if the money is to be left on deposit for one year and four months and earns 4.5% annual interest. Here, the given R, this 5,000 pesos is now uh, the simple interest. We also have one year and four months as the value of T. So this is one year and four months and the interest rate is 4.5% or 4.5% Now take note that the given uh, value of T is 1 year and 4 months and again the value of T should be in years so we need to convert this 4 months into uh, a fraction of a year thereby time T will now be equal to 1 plus 4 over 12 because we have 12 months in a year and again of course the rate of interest 4.5 percent is also converted as 0.045 then substituting these values of i the rate of interest r and t into this formula for p okay we'll now have 5000 divided by this whole quantity 0.045 times the quantity 1 plus 4 over 12. Please take note that when dividing uh, by this whole quantity, we need to incorporate uh, quantitative symbols. Okay, so we need to be careful. No? We need to consider this as a whole quantity when dividing it, uh, when we have it as a divisor of 5,000 there. After simplifying, you'll get, of course, this value which is 83,000 333.33 pesos. This is now the principal needed to generate an interest of 5,000 pesos for the period of one year and four months at the interest rate of 4.5%. Okay? Let's have this third example. Suppose we want to determine the time necessary for a deposit of 20,000 200 pesos to earn 3,550 in simple interest if the money is to earn 4 and 3 fourths percent annual interest. 
again clearly uh, that value of 20,200 is our principal so this is P is equal to 20,200 and the interest is 3,550 of course in pesos and the interest rate is 4 and 3 fourths or 4.75% which is of course equal to 0 0.0475 and we are to look for the time t okay now substituting these values of i p and r into this equation for t it will now be equal to t is equal to 3550 that's the value of either divided by this whole quantity P is 20,200 and R is 0 0.0475 simplifying you'll get T is equal to 3.70 years so this is now the time needed for this uh, principal of 20,200 to earn an interest of 3,550 at that rate of 4.75%. Now, let's have another example. Suppose we need to compute the simple interest due on a 75-day loan of 20,000 pesos if the annual interest rate is 6.25%. Again, the given R, P is equal to 20,000 pesos. R in decimal form is 0.0625 and T is equal to 75 days substituting this given values of P R and T which is 75 days into this formula for I we have I is equal to P times R times T Okay, where P is 20,000 pesos, R is 0 0.0625. Now for this time T, since it is given in days, we need to have it converted to years. So we do so by dividing it by 360. Note also that we utilize the ordinary method because there's no required method to use in the problem. Simplifying, we'll have this value of 260.42 as the simple interest. Alright? Now, let's have one more example. Suppose the previous problem goes this way. Calculate the simple interest due on a 75-day loan of 20,000 pesos using the exact method if the annual interest rate is 6.25%. Well, this is to compare to the computation of simple interest using the ordinary method that we presented earlier in example in example 4. Here we have the same given data, only that we are required to use this exact method. Again, the given R, P is equal to 20,000 pesos R in decimal form is 0 0.0625 and T in days is 75 days. Substituting these given values of P, R, and T into this equation or formula for I, we now have I is equal to 20,000, that's the value of P, okay? And R is 0 0.0625 times 75. Well, this is in days, and we are to make use of the exact method. That's why we need to divide it by 365. Simplifying this, you will now get I is equal to 256.85 pesos. In the last two examples, it was also illustrated to us that given the same values of the quantities involved, ordinary interest is always greater than exact interest the concept of simple interest is really simple but exciting to learn i hope you learned something from this video in my next video 
I'll be discussing about the methods of computing the simple interest when the time period given is between specific dates. Thanks for watching.